2001, MGA Entertainment would change the toy industry forever with the introduction of Bratz. Bratz was so popular that even Barbie was getting pushed to the side. So as a response to Bratz, and in an attempt to become popular with younger audiences again, <laughs> In 2002, just a year after Bratz debuted, Mattel would release My Scene. The main My Scene girls are Barbie, Madison, Delancey, Noli, and Chelsea. The 2008 reboot's main girls are Kennedy, Madison, Nia, Delancey, and Chelsea. I have to say something first because I am not going to be including Barbie in this. I was like, what are you doing? Barbie is kind of the main girl. I just didn't want to include her because she was obviously replaced by Kennedy for a reason. You know, um, Mattel, I think it's pretty clear that Mattel obviously did not want to associate Barbie with the Mycene brand because Barbie is timeless and Mycene is not timeless. Mycene was created to purely, you know, go against the brats, allegedly. We all know. <laughs> we all know what I'm really thinking, okay? Mycene just, they were never, they were never a priority for Mattel. Um, and I believe that they decided to remove Barbie from the Mycene brand because they knew that the Mycene brand was going to come to an end, it was going to flop, something was gonna happen to it, and attaching Barbie to a failure was probably not a good look and is likely not something that they wanted to be associated with Barbie at all. Because she can do everything and she doesn't fail or whatever. Also, Kennedy has literally everything about Barbie, from her style, her personality, to her boyfriend. <laughs> she is the exact same as Barbie. Um, it's basically Barbie, they just changed her name. Aside from Kennedy, I am not going to include any other Mycene uh, characters that were introduced in 2008 because I feel like that reboot was boring and the characters were boring and I just don't have any interest in that. So yeah. I would cast Madison as Alicia Bow. Noli would be Havana Rose Lou. Delancey would be Renee Rapp. Chelsea as Awuli e. Cravalho. Kennedy as Kristen Froseth. You can disagree with me or whatever the heck. I don't really know what to tell you, but yeah, that's that's who I would cast. So first, we have to give our thanks to Silk MB3. We appreciate them and we respect Silk MP3 here. Silk MP3 was a major help. <laughs> major, major, major help. They are the stylists of this live action my scene movie. <laughs> Here is Noli's outfits. She loves skateboarding and wearing comfy clothes. And so I picked out a long dress for her because, you know, I love a theme. It's laid back but also really classy. So it's not like she's putting in the effort because she's sporty. And for the day fit, I was really obsessed with this one look she wore as a kid, so I had to recreate it. She wore these boots with striped socks and a mini skirt. Ugh, I was so in love with it, and so I decided to put my own spin on it, and I think it's so cute. Something like a skater would wear, but like if you want to flash someone, I guess. <laughs> also, the hat is an early 2000s staple. Next up, we got Delancey. So I've read that she's a surfer, 
so loves the beach. She also has this I don't care if you hate me or love me attitude. So I saw the bag and I was like, yeah, this is definitely Delancey. And also she loves the edgy and cool style. Also, she wore this really cute hat in one of the webisodes and I had to recreate that vibe. And the scarf thingy on the top is just so early 2000s, right? For the night fit, I decided to ditch the fur because I didn't want it to be too redundant. I think this dress is so cool. I added the shell bag because she loves the beach. Now it's time for Chelsea. Chelsea! So, <laughs> she loves retro fashion and wants to be a fashion designer. So I think she'd totally be a Mew Mew girl. And this dress reminds me of the 60s, kinda. Also, the Afghan coat. I always associate Chelsea with brownish colors. So when I saw the set, I was like, yeah, this is Chelsea. Now, time for Madison. My personal fave. Dayfit. It says on her page that she loves accessories, and I've noticed that she's always wearing a lot of accessories. And Silk MP3 loves adding accessories. <laughs> also, I've noticed that she's always wearing off-shoulder tops, and she's a Leo. So the Leo ring fits. Also, she's into music, so vinyl ring. I think this fit is perfect, to be honest. And night fit. She wore this blue dress once, and so I picked out a blue dress for her, plus white fur. Also, an amazing outfit, and the pop of red is just so good. I also gave her the same Vivian Westwood as I did with Kennedy slash Barbie because I guess they're friends, right? So matching rings sound nice. Now time for the last, but definitely not least, Kennedy. <laughs> I picked pink coated fits for her because she's Barbie. Also, I interpreted outrageous as unique, so I chose the butterfly dress, and I also remember they loved their furs, so I added the blue fur jacket. And for this, she has this black and pink fit, but it was like with pants, and also it said she loved local shops, so I used the top and skirt from a small business, and the rest are high-end brands because I feel like it would fit her. Also, it's a day fit, but really glamorous and girly. Again, much thanks and appreciation for Silk MP3 for helping. Hey girls, what's new on the scene? Free CDs. These My Scene dolls now come with their own music CD. Ashanti, Maya, Garbage, Smash Mouth, My Scene. Okay, so before I present to you my idea, of a my scene live action, I am going to have to kind of explain the vision here. And like the direction I'm trying to go for is a tad bit older. My scene just doesn't seem like a kid's thing to me. Like it is a kid's thing, but I feel like anyone that knows about my scene is an adult. And if they were to bring back my scene, I feel like it would mainly appeal to that demographic. Also, another thing is like, the characters would frequently go to clubs in the original My Scene, and they were like 16. Okay, so the story takes place in the girls' senior year of high school. They're like 17, 18 years old. They all promise each other that friendship is everything, and they will always be besties forever, and they will always stay in New York together forever. The girls soon start applying to colleges, and each of them know what they want to do except for Kennedy. Madison wants to be a songwriter, Noli an athlete, Chelsea a fashion designer, and Delancey an artist. Kennedy tells the girls that because it's their last day of high school, that they should try to have as much fun as they can. The girls all agree with Kennedy and start planning for a trip to Paris during spring break because it's the fashion capital of the world. Fast forward to Delancey in art class. The art teacher notices Delancey and recommends Delancey to go to an exclusive art camp where she would get an opportunity to work with some of the industry's most respected creators and have many one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. This camp would be a huge benefit for her in her career, but it's during spring break, so Delancey declines. Noli gets noticed by a renowned coach that wants her to go to sports camp during spring break. Noli considers it, but declines the offer. Chelsea gets invited to New York Fashion Week, an event that she would kill to go to. 
but she declines as well. Madison gets discovered by a major record label who wants to sign her and have her flown out to LA during spring break so they can discuss things and have her potentially record an album. Madison gets so excited about the message and has no idea what to do, but then she thinks and accepts the offer. During lunch, the girls all sit together and Kennedy tells them about a party that is gonna happen this weekend and all the girls except Madison are focused. Madison, are you okay? Yeah, totally. I'm just, um, tired. Madison thinks about whether she should or shouldn't tell her friends and decides that she should because her friends should understand, right? She tells them about what happened and their faces go from happy to upset. Maddie, how could you betray us? Yeah, I rejected an offer to go to art camp for this. I rejected an offer for the same thing, but for sports. I rejected New York Fashion Week for this. I'm sorry, it's just that this is my dream. We made a promise, Madison. You should have asked us before doing something like this. Wow, so I have to ask my friends for permission to follow my dreams? Everyone except Kennedy suddenly stop feeling angry and they kind of agree with her. Well, yes, we planned this trip together. Kennedy, I kind of see Madison's point. I mean, this is her dream in life. She will always have us, but she won't always have these opportunities. That's true. I kind of wish I didn't give up Fashion Week now. I can't believe you guys are taking her side. She just betrayed us. At nighttime, Madison is getting ready for bed and Noli calls her. Hey, Madison. Hey, what's up? I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for being upset with you. It's okay. I mean, you did defend me, so thank you for that. Suddenly, all the girls get a group call request from Kennedy. Madison, I'm not mad anymore because we can plan a summer trip instead. All the girls get all excited and agree about the summer. On early admissions day or whatever it's called, all the girls check their emails except Kennedy and <laughs> they see that they got accepted to the school that they applied to. Initially, they get excited, till they realize that it's in different states, except Chelsea. Madison, California, Noli, Massachusetts, and Delancey, Rhode Island. At lunch, they all debrief. So, what colleges did all you girlies get into? I got accepted into FIT. The whole group congratulates her, but everyone else looks reluctant to say where they got in. Come on guys, don't be shy. I mean, I don't even know what I want to do after high school. Well, I got into my dream school. The whole group congratulates her. But it's in California. What? You cannot be serious. I'm serious. What the actual fuck, Maddie? Did you not apply close to home? I did, I just applied to my dream school too. I didn't expect to get in. Yeah, me too. I got into Harvard, but I applied for fun. I wasn't expecting to get accepted. You guys cannot be serious. Wait, the Harvard? Yes. Wow, that's actually so cool. Chelsea, do not support her behavior. She's a traitor. Stop overreacting, Ken. Where did you get into? Rhode Island School of Design. That's it. You guys are all dead to me. Don't speak to me ever again. Well, I guess except for you, Chelsea. Are you with me or not? Kennedy, this is so not like you. What? It's not like me to be upset that we won't be spending a vacation together. It's not like me to be upset that all my friends are leaving me. It's not like me to be mad that I basically peaked in high school and have no future. We will always be friends no matter where we are. We promise to all stay together in New York. You guys aren't friends. You're fake ass bitches. Kennedy, how can you say that? What? The truth? <gasps> Kennedy is then in her room sobbing because she has no idea what to do with her life and she just ended all of her friendships. All of the Mycene girls ignore her. On the intercom, Kennedy gets called down to meet with her counselor and she just completely breaks down and she explains to the counselor that she has no idea what to do with her life. The counselor explains to her that she can just take a gap year and she's like, a gap year? What the fuck is that? And the counselor explains to her what it is. And Kennedy takes a liking to that idea and concept and actually wants to do that instead. She then talks about how horrible she has been to her friends and how bad she feels for being such an absolute biatch. Kennedy realizes that true love is stronger than time, stronger than distance. And she is determined to make up with her besties. She goes up to them at lunch and they ignore her as usual. And then she says, 
I'm sorry. She does this long monologue about how she was projecting because she has no idea what to do in life. No goals, no aspirations, nothing. And it scared her. But she's taking a gap here. She realizes that she loves her mice and girlies and never wants to let them go. They all forgive her. She also adds that she completely understands if they don't want to spend time together for spring break. It's okay, Kennedy. We can hang out. I mean, I definitely blew it with the whole sports camp anyway. Yeah, same for art camp. Donatella definitely won't invite me back to her show. They all look sad and Kennedy starts to feel bad. No, I messed this up for you guys. You guys should be able to live out your dreams. Good luck. He hasn't even been returning my calls. I'm done for. If I start contacting them, well, I'm as good as blacklisted. Yeah, if I beg Donatella, I'll seem desperate. I have a plan. Kennedy hatches a really good plan that will get them all their opportunities back. All the girls work together becoming besties with Kennedy again. Spring break comes and all the girls say goodbye. And Kennedy feels a little sad seeing them all go. But suddenly, she gets a group call request. And they all start chatting. And Kennedy says something like, Friends forever, stick together. And they all agree with her and it's very cute and happy and Yay! Happy ending! Yay! So, thank you for watching because, you know, for these things, I spend the entire day editing them. <laughs> the entire day. Yeah. Mm hmm. And I edit right after I film too, so it's just like a double whammy. Um, I sit here, I get dressed up, and I look good for you guys. I do everything myself, except for the voice acting. A little bit is done by me. I do the editing, I do the subtitles afterwards, I do the drawings. You can't even <laughs> subscribe. Hmm. You can't even, um, what's the, what's the thing? You can't even go to my blog and click that follow button. You can't do that. Huh? It's just one simple thing. I could just go to your home. And no one will know it's me because since I'm so irrelevant, 